previously on Create, Launch, Monetize podcast. All of those things are what the brands that are most successful in the world understand about their customers. And in most cases, they exercise what they understand to use it in their marketing, to use it in the whole entire relationship the brand has with the customer. Right. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. So We're really not... going at the market research angle, it's like, what are they saying? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? What are people around them saying? These are all things that will help you discover what they care about, what they need, what are their pain points, what do they want, mm -hmm. and what they need are two different things. Eben Pagan says you got to hide the medicine in the meat. Welcome to the Create, Launch, and Monetize podcast, where we show you step-by-step -step how to create programs, products, and services, podcasts, and businesses from scratch, launching them and monetizing them. You become the crown's authority in your category, Think about this show as a lifeboat for your business in this ever-changing digital age that allows you to grow at rapid speed to navigate the open waters of the current industry. When you leverage the CLM strategy for your business, podcast, book, or service, you will be recognized as the go-to leader. My name is Anthony Frank, world-renowned marketer, and with me is TEDx speaker and coach, business positioning strategist, and podcast host, Sean Douglas. Hey guys, we're excited to have you here with us to break away from all the noise, stand out, and know for sure that what you will execute will have lasting long-term results. There is so much fluff, so many different strategies, so many different paths to take. How do you know the one is the right path? Well, it always seems that someone else's strategy is amazing and they make millions while you constantly go over your notes from the tens of hundreds of webinars only to not earn revenue, not retain clients and stay broke. Now you don't have to. In a tactical way, Anthony and I, with military level accountability, will take you along the ride on the journey of our own creation, launch, and monetization of our assets and our businesses. Hey, what's up, Create Launch Monetize listeners? We are back with another episode, episode 10, with your host, Sean Douglas and Anthony Frank. In this episode, what we're going to talk about is the monetization of your podcast. In the past, we've been talking about the marketing. How do you create it? How do you launch it? How do you market it? And so many people have problems with monetizing. I put out a post on social media and I said, what are you best at creating, launching, or monetizing? Overwhelmingly, people were saying, I am awesome at creating something. And then a lot of people said, oh, I can launch it. Like I got programs and things like I can launch it. Not a lot of people were good at monetizing. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to show you how to take your podcast and get monetized. Before we do that, I want to thank all of the listeners for your support. Without you, Anthony and I would be talking to dead air. So thank you so much for your five-star ratings and reviews. So far, we have 37 five-star ratings on Apple Podcasts. So thank you so much for doing that. And we have three five-star ratings. And I want to give a shout out to BK for Days, who writes top notch. Sean and Anthony have created something incredible here. This is not only educational and informative, but they also speak from experience. Don't buy into all of the fluff that other digital marketers pitch you and listen to these guys, highly recommend. BK for days, shout out to you, my man, or woman, or whoever you are. Thank you so much for the five-star review. So Anthony, I know that you and I talk a lot about the marketing and a lot about the monetization, and you've been crushing it in a bunch of different industries, man. You know, I saw the the dental thing you were doing, and then with the pod, uh, with the uh, Facebook ads, and then you know just all of the things that you create, man. So this is going to be right in your direction, and uh, and monetization. Yeah. So what what is it that that you think that the audience needs to know? They probably have a product. Maybe it sells pretty well, or maybe they're just starting it out, or are they more established and looking to scale it up? Those are pretty good questions to ask. I guess we could cover all three ranges. Sure. So they're like the, I guess, start from the top down would probably be easiest. Yep. So so there's the established brand or company with product or, or product offering of some type, physical product or info product or course or... Mm -hmm. Whatever that is, you know, could be a major airline. I don't know. It could be anything. 
proven and then they're growing it to scale. So how do they make it more marketable to more of a larger audience that would adopt it? And then how do they position and sell it to them? Yep. And that marketing communication and the advertising is what gets it in front of them. And then the sales process closes them. And there's so many ways to do it, right? So there's like the webinar way, there's the oh yeah, the cold pitch way, there's the cold call, there's the warm sales pitch meeting, there's closing from stage. You can yeah, sell from stage. Yeah, referrals. Lots of different ways that can go. So yeah, man. And on the lower level would be like have a product or you sell some and you need a bigger team or a better streamlined system and process, uh, more advanced standard operating procedures, something to allow you to expand how much you can sell or how many people you can serve, depending on who your customer is. And then you have like the lowest level, which is where you're like entry level starting a new product or creating a new company or offer into the marketplace. But I guess they all fundamentally, it's who you're talking to, the message you're giving them, the offer you're making, and something as close to ideally irresistible as possible for advertising purposes so you can move them into action. Yep, absolutely. And there's been a couple of times where somebody will say, oh, no, nobody will buy that offer. It's $5,000 or whatever. Well, maybe you're not talking to the right group. If you talk to a bunch of broke people, then no one's going to buy because they're broke. There's been a couple of times where people said, man, uh, 1297 to, to launch a podcast with you, man, that's, that's a lot of money. Like, but is it, but is it a lot of money? There's been so many times where somebody says, man, I've spent like $5,000 and I have nothing from that coach or I have nothing from that agency. They've done nothing. I've wasted so much time and so much money. Well, right. So you need to invest the right way. Do your research on the people that you're going to do business with, get testimonials, get referrals, talk to people, see what their results are. But scared money doesn't make money, period. If you're not willing to invest in yourself, then why should people be investing in you as a person? Why should people be investing their time? Why should people invest in your business if you're not willing to invest in your business? So with the monetization strategies, sometimes it's going to take money to make money. If you take out a Facebook ad and it brings you money, you're spending money to make money. And most people want to do everything for free and then try to make a boatload of money. And most of the time, I would say that it doesn't work that way. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's spot on. But even going back to what you're saying with podcasting, I don't think $1,300 is a lot of money to launch a podcast. You know, If you look at the market rate, most companies that'll do a podcast for you charge like 500 to 1200 dollars per month yep. to do it ongoing yep so to get in the game for 1300 bucks is nothing right considering you your know. podcast equipment is really expensive i mean just the minimum bundles for like a focus right bundle that we talked about in the past couple episodes there's a link in uh episode eight or episode seven about equipment that we recommend the focus right 2i2 bundle comes with everything you need the the mic stand and the mixer and the mic and all that stuff is $309. I mean, that's just for the podcast equipment Then you're going to need somebody for a graphic and you need somebody for marketing and you need some, unless you plan on doing everything yourself, you know, I mean, even Libsyn's 20 bucks a month. So, I mean, yeah, it's going to take money. So for you to do everything for free, just doesn't make any sense. And again, then you attract people that want everything for free. Yep. It goes right back to what you had already said about, you know, investing in yourself. I think it's like Zig Ziglar's like famous line and coach Michael Burke says it in his signature speech. Uh, you can't get someone to buy the cookware if you haven't bought the cookware, you know? <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So, that's very, very yeah. true, man. Very true. So for podcast marketing, we've done it on this show. We've already blueprinted it for you. In the first episode, we talked about, like literally in episode zero, what the show is going to be about and the things that we're going to offer. We already primed the audience. So if you're going to launch a podcast and you want to monetize the podcast, even if you don't want to monetize it for the first maybe 100 episodes, but just talk about it. Hey guys, I'm going to have some programs for you. Hey guys, I'm going to have some books for you. Hey guys, I'm going to have, you know, whatever. If you have a podcast that has a guest, the guest is going to want to monetize. 
Absolutely. So you're going to promote their books. You're going to promote their courses. You're going to promote whatever on your show to the guest. It's free advertising for you. You get into their network because hopefully they're going to share out the episode that they were on. So if you're going to monetize something, let's say from a guest standpoint, why not ask the guest, Hey, you have books and things to sell. Can you make an affiliate link so that I can get some of that revenue as well? My listeners will buy your books. My listeners will buy your courses. My listeners will hire you as a coach. Can you make an affiliate link so that I can get some of that affiliate money that my listeners will be spending with you? That's a way to monetize a podcast. Affiliates are big. Yeah, I mean, nowadays, YouTube is a huge way to monetize a podcast because look at Impulsive. Look at Joe Rogan has two channels. Even though he's got the Spotify deal, they're still putting out clips to get everybody to go watch it on Spotify. Yep. There's lots of different ways to, you know, I don't know how strong all those other platforms are still going, but the core places where traffic resides online is pretty much the standard spots that everybody knows already that have been around for a decade, maybe a little bit less in the case of like a medium.com. Right. Those are the spots, right? So it just depends on the platform. And then, you know, there's lots of ways to make money off of the content without actually selling direct to the audience, if that's the way you want to go. But there's equally, like you're saying, if you're going to sell to the audience, whether you're doing it or later, it's good to uh, groom them or uh, let them know the intention in the future. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You know, they can be a part of it. I think Lewis House and uh, John Lee Dumas do a great example of showing that in how they, they worked, you know? Yep. John Lee Dumas built a million dollar business from his podcast. He's got 2,000 episodes, but, you know, I mean, I think he even charges now. I think somebody's told me that he charges like $3,500 just to be a guest on his show because of the listenership that he has. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't always start out with that as like the way to monetize the show. Right. Right. So I think in the beginning, he was just making them because he got out of the military and he wanted to do something every day that was consistent in his life. Yep. And that became the thing. And then it became a challenge to how do you batch record them all? And then once he figured that out, then he had like such a huge following. He started asking them, like, what do you guys need? And then that's when he created like the Freedom Journal and the other journal and then Podcasting Paradise and different stuff that he's created along the way. Yep. You know, Lewis House kind of did the same thing. He he created like his own personal brand and then he created this school of greatness. And then, then he sold the book and then the book helped him sell more courses. And then after he did that, he kind of did the affiliate thing for a really long time with other known affiliates across pollinated their list. Mm-hmm. And then he got to the point where he started publishing other books like the masculinity book. And again, that's like him niching down his large audience to find some more segmented audiences of men yeah, that think and believe that what he believes in. It's interesting. Yep. That's true, man. So not only can you, can you monetize the guest stuff because you're good because they're going to want to sell their programs, products, and services. So just get an affiliate. Every guest you have on the show, like, is there going to be something you want to promote? I got a book coming out. Awesome. Do you have any affiliates for that? Uh, Do you have a course that you want to promote? I just had a couple on the show and they had created the create your, create your love life or create the love of your life or something like that. And it's an online course for single women who want to get rid of subconscious beliefs. I was like, that's amazing. Do you have an affiliate for that? And they're like, we do. I'm like, let's do this. So I always ask, like, do you have an affiliate for that? If they say no, like, would you, would you be interested in creating one so that I can give an affiliate link? And some of them have said, no, I don't want to do an affiliate with you. I'm like, but you're selling on my show. And that's how I say it. I'm like, but you're selling on my show. And they're like, well, yeah. Like, so that's why I ask. <laughs> like, You know, (laughs) if they don't, they don't. It's like, whatever. Another way that you can monitor. pretty logical sense to do it. No, I think they should. That's just my opinion. It's just my, it's just my opinion. I think that they actually should do affiliates. I mean, it's logical. Yeah. I said, plus it's tracking the data. So. Oh, hundred percent. It seems like a a much more of a win-win scenario to do it than not to do it. Right. Right. hundred percent. But. Again, some some of the people are young in the industry and they don't understand. So 
You know, I just tell them like, but you're going to sell on my show. But if you're going to sell on my show, I, I feel like I should get an affiliate. Another way that I saw that's getting pretty popular is a bunch of Facebook ads that I've seen is, do you want to monetize your podcast? Don't monetize your listener, monetize the guests. So they want you to sell your guests into your coaching programs or products or services. You want to sell your guests, your stuff. I'm like, I don't know about that. I mean, if I have Oprah Winfrey on my show, the chances of me closing Oprah on a sale, very slim. The chances of me closing Jeff Hoffman, the founder of Priceline.com is going to be slim. There's nothing I can offer these millionaires and billionaires, nothing. So either your guests that you're having are brand new to the industry, which I've also heard that you should be as a podcaster, you should be interviewing on your show, your potential clients. I'm like, why would I need to do that on a podcast? Well, that doesn't make sense to me. For me, there's no ROI there. I'm going inter- to, why would I need to do it on a podcast? Because I could just do it in a Zoom call. Hey, let's get on a discovery call. That's what that's for. Hey, let's just have a quick meeting. Let's just see if our energy vibes. So why would I need to do that on a podcast? Now, if I do business with that person, I tell them, and you'll be a guest on my show. So I'm leveraging my show to say, hey, podcaster would love to be a guest on your show. And in return, I would be a guest on your show. You'd be a guest on my show. So in return, I would offer the same courtesy to you. And then some of those podcasters that come on my show, I tell them about my podcast marketing guide. And some of them pick them up and some of them don't. It just depends on if they really want to buy it or not, if their show really needs it or not. So I offer it to them and a couple of the podcasters have. So yes, I have monetized my guests that way, but not in the sense that, Hey, you need my $5,000 coaching program. They won't buy it. Yeah. I've seen that model work for some, like, uh, we know, I'm not going to say who they are. Um, (laughs) we know somebody that it does work really well for, but they only interview their ideal clients and they sell like a 5k offer to them. Right. And, and maybe like 10% of them take action on the offer. Right. Which is cool. You know? Yeah. I just don't want to do uh, that. <laughs> just, it just, I guess it just depends on the intentions. Like right. the way that conversational podcasting is going, it it's more ideal to just talk to people, yep. educate people, connect with people. And then if they want to do business with you and they need your services and that's what you offer, then it makes sense to just have a conversation about it when the time comes. Yep. There's other sides to the coin, right? Like some people might think of monetization like, oh, that's just transactional. Mm-hmm. Others might say, you know, you only attract the people you can do business with. I guess that takes it back to what you were saying early in the episode where it's like, let's say you're selling a $20,000 offer. Could you apply that same principle? Well, if you had the right invitation for the right caliber of people that you knew needed your product or service, then you could probably orchestrate a way to interview them and then open the conversation to sell them right. a $20,000 offer. But you would have to first fish into the right market, so to speak. Do you have a way uh, to price it? Do you have a way that, I don't know if it's a formula or some kind of algorithm, but I know a lot of people struggle with, well, what do I price it for? Do you have any advice on what you tell people that they should be pricing their offers on? Well, it depends on what it is. If it's a software as a service, is it a service just for a B2B? Is it a product? Uh, you know, how valuable is the product? All that kind of stuff, right? Obviously, like you can always go back to like the standard Russell Brunson, 10 times what you're going to offer it for. That's what I do. And, est- and establish that value. That's certainly one way to do it. That's what I do. I do uh, 10%. Proven, you know, the way he says that is like 10 times the actual asking price uh, proven in the value listed. So, right. And it seems to work. It would just buy like a value stack, you know? Yep. Values. So yeah, that's what I do, man. I do, I do Russell Brunson's, you know, like his 10% rule or 10 X rule. And then I value stack. That's, that's pretty much how I stack my offers. You know, we're going to do this, 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 this. And most people, I had a conversation yesterday with somebody and they were like, wow, like you're like, you're offering way more than anybody else. 
and I'm very transparent with them. And I said, it's already written. It's already like, you're going to get my guides. You're going to get my programs. You're going to get this. You're going to get this. You, you create it one time. And then you just send it to them. There's, there's no time involved. And then I'm going to get you booked on some podcasts and then I'll get you booked on a couple online speaking events. And then I'll get you booked in some media. It doesn't take any time. You just got to send out emails. But if you have a network of people where let's say you have 10 podcast friends and all you're doing is feeding those 10 podcast friends, there's no time involved. The template for your email is already made. You just have to plug in that person's information say, Hey, I got this one guest that I think would be amazing. And then you send it out to your 10 podcast friends, your four media buddies that are going to put them on the radio or put them on TV or, you know, local news or whatever. If you have a network full of people, it doesn't cost anything. So I have no problem delivering a ton of value to that client that doesn't cost time or money. 10 minutes. You can't take 10 minutes to email four people you know, to see if they're a fit for their show. That's what I do. I think what makes it not cost anything in time or money is you've already got the system and the process and the standard operating procedure in place. Right. Yeah, true. To where yep, that's either it. you can do it or you can outsource it to someone else to do or you can hire someone and insource it to them to do. Without those three things, it does take more time and usually more money because then it's creating costly energy wasted or time mistakes, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And again, that's why like hiring somebody like you makes all the sense in the world because you're not going to have to figure it out on your own. Right. You just can hire Sean and boom, shock a lock. It's freaking bad. <laughs> there you go, yeah. man. There you go. A couple more monetization okay. strategies I want to go over real quick. Uh, sponsorships and advertisers. A great way to find sponsorships and advertisers for your show, which is something that Anthony and I will be getting into as we get more episodes under our belt, is Podcorn, P-O-D-C-O-R-N, Podcorn.com. Podcorn.com is a sponsorship and advertising website where you pitch people that are on there looking to spend money on podcasts. And you can either create a pre-roll ad to your show or a mid-roll ad to your show. And I believe that it's Podcorn that's advertising this, but I saw the stats somewhere, but I, I think it's on the Podcorn website. That said 55% of sales from podcasts happen after a mid-roll. So after a mid-roll has gone through your podcasts for your advertising or Whatever it is, 55% of people have bought something that was advertised during a mid-roll or after a mid-roll. I was like, that's interesting because I wouldn't want to break up my show just to advertise something. And I feel like the pre-roll would probably be where it's at, but based on people's behavior, and this is a little tricky. People fast forward through commercials. They don't care about commercials. They just want to listen to the content. So I'm kind of iffy. Yeah, I mean, if, if Libsyn or Focusrite or the products that we use, you know, like if somebody created a WordPress site or if WordPress was an advertiser, definitely let's have them advertise on our show. I've had verbal advertise. I've had a couple other people advertise and it's worked out and they've gotten business, which is great. But I kind of revert back to the behavior of TV, people on the radio. Well, fast forward, like if, like if there's a commercial coming up or it's not like songs playing, they'll swap back between stations. It's the same way with TV. They fast forward through commercials nowadays. Everything's on TV. That's why people like Netflix and Amazon and everything. They're like, ah, oh, we care about the advertising. Let's just get to the show. And I'm afraid that that is now the behavior that's programmed into people, especially when they listen to podcasts. They want to listen to podcasts. They don't want to listen to commercials. So I don't know how long that sponsorship advertising is going to be around for based on people's behavior. I think it'll just change dynamic and it'll go more towards like traditional media style. So instead of like the mid roll ad doing most of the selling, It'll be more important to people to have like the, or the brand, right? It'll be more important to the brand that would be the sponsor right. to have like the marquee title where it's like such and such show by acorns, you know, uh, you see that on a lot of YouTuber videos where yeah. they're like, you're watching da -da -da TV brought to you by da -da -da, you know, like whatever the name of the brand is. And then they always like find a way to mid roll and add to you in the middle of the video. 
Huh. Weeble does it a lot. I don't know if you see it a lot on YouTube or not, but there's a ton of channels where they just make like stop motion videos with narrated audio. And then they like find a way to tell you that it's sponsored by, you know, Epidemic right. Sound or Weeble or some other targeted company talking to a specific type of audience. Honey, the discount app for Chrome yep. extension, they dominated the Mr. Beast videos for like years. <sighs> Until they got everybody in the world to freaking download the honey, you know? Huh. So, yeah, that's super popular on YouTube. So that'll be, like, more towards the direction it'll go. Like, even I think Oprah's podcast is by somebody else. Right. Um, And even if we did it, if we said... Like, by her her network, like, own network or something. Right. (laughs) Right. And and we could do it. We could say, hey, this episode is sponsored by these people. Uh, read like a 10 second blurb about them. Go to their website. Boom. And then we go to the show. So it's not like a commercial. It's just, hey, guys, welcome to the show. This episode is sponsored by, you know, whatever. A, a, a non monetization, but a great marketing tool. And it could be monetization. It, it definitely could be is a podcast swap. So Anthony had. Uh, Better Marketing Mondays. And let's say my show, Life Transformation Radio, I'm like, hey, I'd like to take an ad out on your show. And all I do is I say, hey, listeners, this is Sean Douglas with Life Transformation Radio or Create, Launch, Monetize podcast. And you're listening to Anthony Frank's show. Make sure you subscribe to both of our shows. So it's basically I'm advertising my show to his platform. And maybe maybe he charges me a hundred bucks. And so every time that plays, I owe him a hundred bucks. I've seen that a lot last year where podcasters are advertising their podcast on other podcasts and they charge them a hundred bucks. Cross pollination. Yep. And that's getting big because podcast listeners listen to multiple podcasts. And if I have a podcast about marketing, yeah, I want to get into your listeners you know, and you want to get in front of my listeners. And if we don't think about it like competition, because there's millions of podcasts out there, if we don't think about it as competition and, and you give you do a podcast swap where tell you what you make a 30 second commercial or 20 second or whatever, I'll do one. You do one. We'll play it on each other's show for free. So we're, we're getting in front of each other's audiences that way. So there's actually a deal that gets made. And I've done that a couple of times. I'm like, Hey, make me one. I'll make you one. And, uh, and we'll play it on each other's shows for a month and see what happens. And my listeners have spiked every time I do it, my listeners spike. So go out there and find some podcasts that you're friends with and be like, Hey man, let's record a 20 second commercial advertising each other's shows on each other's shows. So it could be, could be monetization where you charge the podcaster or it could be free where you both create a commercial. So there's that at the end of the episodes so far, the last couple I've had a podcast marketing guide to market your podcasts and a couple of you've picked it up. So thank you so much for doing that. And that podcast guide can be picked up at bit.ly, bit.ly forward slash podcast marketing guide. It'll be in the show notes, capital P, capital M, capital G, podcast marketing guide. It's everything we know about podcast marketing. There's a couple uh, monetization strategies in there as well. So be sure to pick that up and we'll cover the marketing and monetization inside of that guide. A couple other ways that you can monetize your podcast is by selling your own coaching programs, products, services, your books, your guides, just like I did just now. And you can also use your podcast to leverage to get on stages. I speak at PodFest, Outliers Podcast Festival. Anthony and I met at an event in 2017 called New Media Summit. And it's all these events for podcasters, by podcasters, but it's for people who also want to get into the podcast industry to guest on them, you know, just to really get involved. And I pulled a couple of clients from there, people who want to start their shows, people who want an advertising agency or a marketing agency to market them to podcasts to get them booked on podcasts. And I've seen a lot of people say, we can get you booked on this many shows or this thing. So podcast guesting agencies have started popping up all over the place. They're everywhere now. Yeah. You know what else I was thinking about in terms of monetization is remarketing and retargeting. You know, what I'm seeing 
I don't think I've watched or clicked on an ad for an advertising type of guru doing anything in like, I don't know, seven or eight months. And now I'm seeing like when you don't interact with any of their stuff, you get on like their retargeting list of like people that they've just probably have never engaged. Yeah. And it just over and over and over, they just run different retargeting videos and they just keep showing you other ads and other ads and other ads. Yeah. Um, Annex and Gall's doing a ton of that right now. There's a couple others like that too. So do you think you have some type of offer at some point, they raise their hand, they opted in for it. And then the power of following up with people as often as possible and staying relevant and giving them what they're looking for. Yep. Uh, I think you talked about that a lot in, in the episode where we talked about like email lists, and email follow-up marketing. Oh, email's huge. You're looking you know? The point is to get the listeners from the podcasts into your ecosystem. Like that's, that's like the whole point, but then serve their interests. It doesn't serve anybody for you to peddle your stuff to them. That doesn't work. It's a bunch of crap. You're trying to create a funnel. You have to get your listeners that love your stuff, love your content. I think uh, Seth, Seth Godin, I think he has a thing called his 1000 true fans or somebody has got something called the 1000 true fans, create your 1000 true fans, get them onto an email list and just completely sell through your email list. That's a way to do it. You can get your listeners like the podcast marketing guide. Yes. Get the pod- podcast marketing guide. And then yes, you will be segmented because you get your, give me your email. You will be segmented into a segmentation area of my email where I only push out extremely valuable content about podcast marketing. So when you segment your email list into groups, speaking, coaching, podcasting, you know, whatever, you're only giving them relevant conversation. Now you can unsubscribe. I know a lot of people that will say, Oh, I got to have what Anthony has. I got to get that guide. They get the guide and then they'll get a welcome email and they'll unsubscribe from it right away. All they want is the guy. They don't even want to hear from you. Like, that's fine. I don't care. But I really want to grow my email list so that I can reach more people and give the most amazing content that I can. But again, some people abuse it. And that's just part of the industry. Yeah. Kevin Kelly's 1,000 true fans. Kevin Kelly. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You know what? I, I remember us having this conversation, but it was actually on the private call with Ed. Okay. Uh, and then group that time. I just yeah. thought we had told the audience. I'm glad that we expanded on that. Segmenting the list. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. But yeah, the easiest way to make money selling something is to sell it to the people that already bought from you and sell them more of it, right? right. Or increase the value in the transaction. Yep. So, you know, if you're a local business, this is the same thing we did with that go-kart racing company a few years ago. They're, they're acquiring the customers that are buying a $19 offer and it only costs them roughly $7 to get that customer to come in and buy a $19 offer. And so literally they're getting paid to acquire the customer. And then the easiest thing to do next is to email them every day, keep engaged and relevant and offering them value and then selling them something else, right? getting them to come back a second time because then there's no more customer acquisition costs involved. They paid for themselves to be a customer on the first one and actually made it profitable. Right. That's where it comes into, like I was just talking to somebody about this the other day, like I don't understand what you do. And I was like, it's really, it just comes down to customer acquisition costs. You know, yeah. if you watch Shark Tank, that's like the number one question they always <laughs> ask, like what does it cost your business to acquire a customer? And then usually they make a deal if they know that they can decrease that cost, right? Reduce yep. that cost to yep. acquire those customers because of their existing, you know, platforms, knowledge, list, customer base from another company, et cetera, et cetera. It's simple for them to, to see through that. So in monetizing something, you need to sell it profitably. You need to know your numbers so you can scale it up. Yep. And then if it all keeps working, then you can really continue to grow it. If not, you have to make adjustments accordingly. Solid advice. Yep. So as we close the show, man, I think we covered a lot of monetization strategies, but it all comes down to what are you giving your audience? Who is your audience? Our highest rated episodes right now are the ones talking about launching and marketing a top rated podcast, which tells me that out of the nine episodes that we have, 
the podcast stuff is what seems to be the most interesting. The other episodes about creating something, what's the launch sequence, we explain in depth in episode one, two, and three, how to, how to document the creation, how to market and launch whatever it is that you created. It could be anything. Right now, it is the marketing of a podcast and launching the top-rated podcast. But that's the in thing right now. Everybody wants to have a podcast. And we're so in baby into the industry. There's only like 1.3, 1.8 million podcasts. And right now there's only 850,000 active podcasts, which means over 500,000 podcasts pod faded out. They quit. They don't do it anymore for whatever reason. Can you imagine if we had 850,000 YouTube channels, how easy it would be to monetize it? I there's still a- think YouTube and podcasts is probably the two most untapped markets. For sure. Uh-huh. For sure. And then whatever new fangled platform comes next. What was the one you mentioned when we talked? For um for video like or platform everybody had been talking about. Oh Clubhouse. Clubhouse? Yeah, yeah, Clubhouse is like, like the newest hotness. Yeah. Yeah. So I you know, did always re- be something like that. Of course. There's always to be something. What I did was I researched how to upload videos to Amazon Prime, like the Amazon Prime TV. And there's actual ways to like upload your video. So what I'm thinking about doing is taking Create, Launch, Monetize since we do the the Zoom video and then we record audio and, you know, for the podcast. But I'm thinking about making it, you know, professional trailer on the front, you know, or intro on the front, the, the video on the back, you know, the outro and try to upload it and create an Amazon channel. Oh, that could be kind of cool. I don't know who's doing that. You know, I don't know who's doing that on, uh, uh, you know, for podcasts, but my daughter goes on Amazon Prime and watches like this little girl's like gymnast channel, whatever the, whatever she does, but her and her sister have like these challenges that they do around the house, you know? And she's like, oh, we should try that. It's kind of like an Amazon version of like TikTok, you know, it's like some kind of challenge thing, whatever, but she likes it. And then, you know, this, this girl goes to like some gym gymnastics competitions and some other stuff, you know, and she's like, I want to do that. I'm like, if, if, if my daughter's influenced by this, by this person, I wonder if a little girl could do it, I could figure it out. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. <laughs> I'll figure it out. You know? So my daughter's been into that, but uh, any last words, man, for the, for the listeners. Yeah. Don't drown in opportunity and don't overthink it. And it's, it's yep. often, pretty simple especially if you hire the right people to help you out yep yep absolutely so for the listeners listening please subscribe rate and review the show email us at info at create launch monetize.com if there is a specific question that you have please email us if there's a specific topic that you want us to go in depth on please reach out to us at info at create launch monetize.com. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you think of the show. We like, we're here for you. So I could talk on any platform about anything whatsoever, but we've chosen this topic of creating, launching and monetizing. We've chosen to pour into you guys. So we want to hear from you in email us at info at create launch monetize.com. Don't forget to subscribe and pick up that podcast marketing guide. It'll be in the show notes. Don't forget to pick up that guide. If you're a podcaster or want to get into podcasting next episode will be a recap episode of all that we've talked about for creating, launching and monetizing your podcast. We will see you next time. Hey everybody. If you enjoyed this episode, Be sure to subscribe to Create, Launch, Monetize Podcast and your favorite podcast platform. Be sure to join us every single week so that you do not miss any of our conversations and the straight fire and value that we will drop on this show.